Per ocarina, I think it would cost about just over a dollar in materials, if even that. So. That's. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that the shipment has been received, I'm joined by my good friend Andy. Andy, you want to introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm Andy. I belong to the uh, United States Ocarina Ensemble, also known as Okabanda. I've been playing the Ocarina for 10 years and I'm really excited to test out these 3D printed Ocarinas. So Andy, I think the idea here is I would like to hear you test all of the Ocarinas and pick what you think is the best one. Got it. So pick all the Ocarinas, find the best one. Got it. Okay. So let's start with... Uh, this one. So that one's a four-hole one. Is that an actual ocarina, or is it supposed to just look like the one from Ocarina of Time? So this, in fact, is an actual ocarina. This design is based off of the design that was made popular by Songbird Ocarina back in the heyday of Nintendo Power. If you ever had Nintendo Power, you definitely saw ocarinas in this shape that were just colored to look more like the Ocarina of Time. There's four holes on front and one hole on the back for a total of five holes. Let's see if this plays as well as it looks. Start with a scale. Okay, I might have been blowing too much. Let's see how it goes with less air. It's in tune if I blow with less air. So um, this is a very low breath pressure ocarina. It's a bit weak, it's very airy, and it's not particularly in tune on the high notes, and you can't even hit the highest note, but it's in tune enough to do one single scale, which, for something 3D printed, that's a, this is a good start. Um, this is going to be what we're measuring against. Well, glad to hear we have a good baseline going forward. <sighs> this this might be rough going, going further. Let's try to play the Song of Time on this one. Okay. Okay, I, 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 for, for this being like the first time I've played on this ocarina, um, I'm surprised I was actually able to get that relatively in tune, but it, it was able to play a song and it was printed for the price of like way less than what you'd take to buy an ocarina. Yeah, I, I mean, all per ocarina, I think it would cost about just over a dollar in materials, if even that, so. That's... That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only hefty cost is the, uh, the 3D printer itself and actually learning how to use it, so. Yeah, um, it's a big financial and monetary investment, but if you like to make the 3D printed crafts, it's a good investment, and you get a lot more crafts per dollar than you would with something else. And here's the crazy thing about 3D printers nowadays, you can get a good quality 3D printer with a lot of the bells and whistles for about $200. I have my Ender 3, that cost me $200, but I had to do a bunch of upgrades, which basically made it almost cost $300. But there's this company called Elegoo that just came out with the Neptune 2, and for $180, with almost no upgrades, I'm seeing some of the most fantastic prints of my life, and you can get really high, quality prints for a really low price. It's an absolute that, bargain. That is awesome. So if I were to get into the world of 3D printing, you would recommend one of those two options? Absolutely, they're super beginner friendly. The only thing about the Elegoo Neptune 2 is you have to use their offshoot version of Cura to slice all your things. Um, but I don't want to get ahead of myself of all the ins and outs of 3D printing for, you know, your video here. If you want to learn more about 3D printing and see more of Big Rig's crafts, um, just check out his channel. I'll put a card right up there, or just check the link in the description, or find him as, as a, a comment that I give a big ol' smooch to. Oh. In any case, let's move on to the second docarina. Let's do the other pendant. So this right here is a six hole ocarina with four holes on the front, two holes on the back. Very similar fingering pattern to the one that I just played. Um, do you have any more details on that big rig? Um, the only thing I'd have to say is this was probably the easiest one to print. You don't have to use any support materials, so it's gonna come out looking really nice and smooth. 
without too many software finagling things you'd have to do. This is quite smooth. Like, if you're looking at the, my key light reflecting off of it, you're getting a really nice, clean line. That's very smooth. So let's see if it plays as smooth as it looks. All right. So if I learned anything from the first one, I should use less air than I think I need. I like ocarinas with very high breath pressure, which is why these very low breath pressure 3D printed ocarinas... Um, that's that's why the first time I try, it's like, oh wow, I cannot make a note happen. Then the second time, with a little bit of a gentler touch, I make the notes happen. So let's give it a try. That also got a scale. Um, so one note for this one, um, the uh, fipple hole, the sound hole that comes out isn't perfectly in line with uh, the mouthpiece. So you, it requires a bit of a gentle touch on how you blow into it. Like if you just like <laughs> stick it in your mouth and blow, like you're gonna have a hard time. But if you, if you turn it at a little bit of an angle, so it kind of blows across like a flute, but only like partially, it's hard to explain. But if, it, if it, you have to modify the way you blow for it to have a fuller sound. So comparing to so it, it, it gets lower somehow, but it, it gets fuller. So let's uh, try to play the song of time on this one. That that was that that had a much fuller tone than the other one, but in terms of ease of playing, this one is. Um, a lot more difficult than the other pendant style one. So this pendant style one, while the breath pressure is very low, um, you don't have to make any modifications to how you blow into the ocarina. Whereas this one, um, it has both the very, very uh, sensitive breath pressure as well as very sensitive mouth placement. So I would still rate this one higher. So sorry, little guy. You're, uh, despite being very smooth and easy to make and very pretty, um, you're at the bottom of the totem pole right now. All right, two down. You know, what I have to say is I find it really impressive that you're able to move throughout all these different hole configurations on the fly. Yeah, um, I, I'm definitely less comfortable with pendant ocarinas, which is why I'm doing those ones first. <laughs> so I could just get them out of the way. Um... But I've, I've been playing the ocarina for 10 years. I have 12 whole ocarinas. I have 10 whole ocarinas. I have six whole ocarinas, eight whole ocarinas, um, triple ocarinas, double ocarinas. There's just so many different types of ocarinas that once you learn just the baseline uh, transverse, which is this orientation and pendant, then you can pretty much play all of them with just a little bit of adjustment. That's super cool. Should we uh, move on to the third one then? Yes. Um, for number three, we will be doing what looks like to be a 12-hole soprano ocarina. Um, this one is actually appears to be based off of this one right here by uh, Songbird Ocarina. So if I get them both relatively in focus, you can tell that they're very similar shape, very similar hole placement, both on the front and on the back. This is a really solid Soprano Ocarina. I actually have a video that features this one coming up. Um, or maybe it's already out. I don't know. I don't know. Recording things is strange. Um, but this is a really good Ocarina, so I have high hopes for this one. I want to have a side tangent here. This was by far the hardest ocarina of all four of them to print. Not only did it require very specific wall thicknesses, but I literally have handfuls of failed ocarina prints that were absolutely not good for one reason or another. Sometimes they were super porous and would have holes inside of them. Uh, sometimes they just came out like really ugly. At the end of the day, it was probably a good thing that I went through this because I realized what mistakes I was making. Um, and if you want to go into my trials and tribulations, you definitely should check out my video on the absolute pain it was to print these guys. Um, if you don't watch Big Rig and subscribe and like and leave a comment saying Andy sent me here, ooh woo, 
um, then I'm going to have a real stern talk with you in my next video, viewers. You, you could probably cut out the uwu part, though. I'd be okay with that. Don't cut the uwu part. More, more text equals more engagement, baby! I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, let's test this ocarina. So, Soprano, let's get to it. Test number one. Oof. Um, so let let let's see what note let let's narrow down the notes that I can play. So the low notes are all good. So going from the A, I I I, I haven't checked the tuning, but what I'm assuming if this were a, a soprano C, that would be the A, the lowest note. Okay, so I, I get I, you do get one octave from low A to A, so it is playable. But the high notes, which are the like the power notes on a soprano ocarina, they 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 they're, they're just airy. Um, I'm sure that the test ocarinas probably couldn't play any notes, and for making an an ocarina this small and this like difficult to 3D print, that's impressive. It's just. It cannot play all the notes, sadly. I've noticed that with my amateur tests as well, to be honest. I'm like, well, it's going to have to be good enough. Clip it and ship it, literally. <laughs> so uh, let's see how much of A Song of Time I can play. If, if the note doesn't come out, I'll just keep going. So here we go. If not bad, if Link were to actually play that in the game and the high notes were super airy, do you think he like he would warp back, but only like halfway back in time to his original position? <laughs> be like he'd just be like rather than being like a uh, young Link or adult Link, he'd be like moody teenager Link. Exactly. <laughs> like his voice is breaking as he's scrying. Scraw. All right. Correct me if I'm an idiot, but was Song of Time even an Ocarina of Time, or is that just Majora's Mask? Oh, it was an Ocarina of Time. It's the song that you get to open the door of time oh, when Zelda gives right. you the Ocarina of Time. When she's like, Link, I'm going to throw this Ocarina into the moat without any regard to whether or not, like, it, Ocarinas are ceramic. You cannot toss them. They break. As per my most viewed video, Never Buy This Ocarina, I break a uh, low quality Ocarina of Time replica from Amazon. And it breaks in half when I drop it from six inches, and it totally shatters when I drop it from three feet. Not throwing it, just dropping it. So Zelda, I d would not trust you to handle an ocarina, given that you toss them. It's Zelda, baby. You can enchant items whenever you want. You you do you do you you do have me there when magic exists in that world, and not this one, probably. Checkmate, magic atheists. Darn. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any other comments on the, the on the little guy right here? I well, I didn't have high hopes for it to be the winner, uh, but I'm glad it made it. That's all I gotta say. You could play at least half an octave, or most. Yeah, I of got a full octave. octave out of that. Hey, you know, can't be uh, can't be too upset with that then, considering yeah everything I went through. So um. Let's move on to the 12-hole ocarina in an alto key. I don't know the exact key, but I've tested it, and it seems to be in tune. Um, uh, do you have any comments on the making of this one? Uh, so that one, it seems to be... Uh, in terms of difficulty, it was in the mid-range. Definitely the place where it was posted, they had specific instructions for wall thicknesses, and I followed that to a T. Um, me, personally, as an amateur... It seemed like I could play the most notes with this 12 hole um, as opposed to any of the other ones. So uh, I have high hopes for this guy. Yeah, well, well, let's see if those expectations will be met. So uh, let's start with the scale. Um, the ergonomics are a little wonky, but you, 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 get, you take what you can get. I can cover all the holes without like breaking my, without cracking any bones. Okay, this one's the best one by far. 
<laughs> you didn't even get to play Song of Time and we already know. <laughs> no, okay. The, the, every note on this ocarina either is in tune or only takes a little bit of breath adjustment to be in tune. So, like, if this was your only ocarina, you actually could pretty much get by with this. Um, this, this actually is a fully functioning ocarina without any major setbacks. And that's not something you ever expect from a 3D printed ocarina. This is... I've gotten a 3D printed ocarina before, like several years ago, back when the technology was far less advanced, and um, it could play notes, but again, it, 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 it couldn't play like all of the notes that it was alleged to play. Whereas this one, it can, no problem. So uh, just, just to flex, let's play the Song of Time on this one as well. Andy, that was so good. It sounded just like in the game. I want an encore out of this ocarina. I don't know, man. Um, what do you suggest? I suggest that everybody subscribes to Andy on YouTube. The link is right here, right there. The, the buttons are right there. <laughs> Go press all the buttons. The buttons are on the one corner or in the description or when I comment on the video. Two sentence minimum per comment. That's what I want to see. Yeah, I, I, I expect full essays in the comments. I will be grading them. All right, let's hear that on All right, um... Okay, so just final critiques of this ocarina. Um, so while it is mostly in tune, the very highest notes, the uh, what on an alto C would be the the E and the F, the. So those are a little bit wonky. Um, it takes a a reasonable amount of adjustment with your breath pressure to be more in tune, but they're both not quite in tune. However. Um, if I were to rank these ocarinas from worst to best, um, sorry, little guy, um, you do have the least functioning, Can you give but me you are easier to play than this one. So uh, I'm just going to rank them in order. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, tied for worst, almost, we have the uh, round smooth boy and the small blue boy. However, um, the round small boy is much harder to play, and while it does have a fuller tone than the small blue boy, the round smooth boy... <laughs> the potato. I'm just... The sorry. potato. Um, well, actually, um, if, you're calling it, if, you're, if you're calling it a potato, you'd yeah. be, this one would be the sweet potato. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, the round one is the most difficult to play in terms of both mouth positioning and breath pressure, so sadly, because of that, I have to rank it as the worst. The uh, Soprano Ocarina, while it is missing uh, m half of an octave of range and it can only play one octave and not even like a major scale, um, it's pretty easy to play. You don't need that much in the terms of breath pressure adjustments. So because you get more functional notes out of this one, um, this one does edge out the Round Boy. Now, for the top two, they look pretty similar in shape, but they're very different. This one, while it did have relatively airy notes, it was easy to play, and the ergonomics were just totally fine. Um, this was a good ocarina um, for a 3D printed ocarina. So this is the second best one. And of course, the one we, we gushed over the most, the uh, Alto 12 Hole Boy. Um, this one was super easy to play, functioned as like, it functioned at the level of like, an ocarina that you might even buy from like an actual ocarina company. So the fact that you can just 3D print this, that is wild. So this one is by far the best one. You could actually use this as an ocarina to like practice on. 
And if you just need an expendable ocarina to uh, learn how to play the instrument on, um, I can't not recommend this. Of course, I would recommend something like um, The Night by Noble More, which is a legit, very good plastic ocarina, and there's no chance that it'll be bad. Um, I have an affiliate link in my description below, haha. <laughs> but otherwise, um, this one's great. Uh, 10 out of 10 for a 3D printed ocarina. <laughs> yeah, so if you got an ocarina a couple of years ago, that probably has to do with the fact that people have been constantly uploading new and better in tune ocarinas over the years to Thingiverse. And because of that, I think that's why we have such a good product here as we see today. Okay, um, do you do you do you want me to demo the one that I got five year, five or six years ago? Yes, let's see it. All right, um, give me a second to fish it out. Uh, this one was given to me by somebody at an anime convention about six years ago, my senior year of high school, I believe. Um, so as you can tell, um, this one and this one are almost identical when it comes to like shape and hole size. So these might be uh, iterations of the same mold. Um, so I'll do a quick comparison. So for the one you've already heard, and then, and now for the one I got like six years ago. That one actually sounded a lot this better. One, <laughs> this one had a much fuller sound, oh yeah. my God. I think I, get, I just got used to playing 3D printed ocarinas and their lower breath pressure, and then I was suddenly able to play this one in tune. Because I was not able to play this one in tune when I first got it, because I like high breath pressure. But... It... <laughs> 3D printing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could have everything to do with uh, how I printed, what res you know, uh, what layer heights, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So... Yeah, there's, there's far more factors involved than just the design and your printer. Exactly. So Andy, would you recommend somebody printing off an ocarina and using it as a serious instrument? That's that's a bit of a loaded question, Matt. <laughs> so I have two parts to this answer. The first being, if you are not an ocarina player and you're not able to accurately judge whether or not it's a good instrument, I would definitely say no. However, if you are able to judge whether or not an ocarina is good, if you're willing to put in the work to find a good design, uh, make iterations of it to find the right like thickness, whatever, I don't know 3D printing, but Big Rig knows all the terminology. If you're willing to put in the effort to make it right, it could be. Um, I, I'm sure you won't be able to consistently replicate it, but I'm, I think it's possible. All right, Andy, well, thanks for talking with me and I hope you enjoy the ocarinas. Um, I, I, my, my collection just went from like 30 something to like, I think I'm up to like 40 ocarinas now. Oh my God, you're insane. <laughs> yeah, I am. It's, it's been a long, it's, I've been accumulating a lot of little guys over the years. I've been playing for 10 years, Matt. Jeez. That's only four, that's one ocarina per quarter. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I had a ton of fun uh, playing around with these ocarinas made by Big Rig, and if you're interested in the process he had in making them, uh, definitely check out his channel, uh, the video linked in the description or in the card up, up, up over there, approximately. I might have already done that card, so just check the description. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for watching, uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, or else I'm not actually threatening you, but... I'm giving you threatening energy. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!